Uh, so, it's my pleasure to introduce Flavia Poma. She's presenting uh, from London, directly from London, <laughs> Skype. I paper a joint work with, uh, now she's connected with the Skype. And uh, I don't see now Stefano, which will be here. Ah, okay, he's over there. So, uh, Flavia uh, you, is going to present Poma French Factors for the non-US investors and she's currently uh, working at City in London. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes clearly, so thank please you. Please start. Okay. Uh, or not. Uh, we cannot hear you. this uh, talk from remote um, basically no time um, I do apologize also for my voice I hope uh, you can hear me clearly yes um, yeah so work with professor Stefano Marmi that I'm going to present um, it was developed during an internship at Faxet uh, before I start, uh, I think I have to make a disclaimer just to be on the safe side. So um, everything I show here, the views and the methods, they are my, my views and uh, they are completely independent from CT or any other of my affiliations. Um, so yeah, the title of my talk is uh, from a French factors for the non-US investor, but uh, by this I don't mean to uh, ignore the US market. Um, what I want to stress, what we wanted to stress in our work was the importance to look at other markets as well and to have data coverage for uh, other country markets. So uh, let me try and give you a bit of the setup and the motivations for this work. Um, so basically uh, when one looks at uh, uh, stock markets and returns analysis, um, the first issue that uh, one faces is the availability of data. When I mean, say availability, I mean uh, data available online, free of charge, um, historical return data in particular. Um, now, if one looks at the situation globally for uh, different markets, uh, one can see that there is a very lucky country, which is the uh, US, and where the coverage we'll see in a moment is very full and, and quite good. Uh, but uh, if one looks at other countries, we uh, see that uh, the, the situation changes and uh, they are less fortunate, we should say. So, um, our main motivation uh, two years ago when we started this work was to uh, try and provide um, coverage for uh, um, historical return analysis and from a French type of uh, uh, portfolios for uh, other country markets. Now, before I show you the results, I want to um, cover a bit of the theory. I know that uh, you already seen this. Uh, concept in the previous talk, uh, but uh, please bear with me, uh, I will try to be brief. Um, so the, the, the starting point is the CAPM model, and I, I won't spend too much time on this, uh, because the Professor Stella was, uh, was uh, very uh, exhaustive on this. Um, so basically CAPM model can be reassumed this equation, where um, the attempt is to explain the expected return of a stock in terms of uh, the return of uh, risk-free assets and uh, the excess return of the market. And the beta here is uh, the beta of the stock uh, with respect to the CAPM model. And it's basically uh, a measure of the uh, sensibility of the excess return of the stock with respect to the excess return of the market. Now, under the hypothesis of the CAPM, um, we know that uh, we, a portfolio of stocks can be optimized in terms of uh, return and risk. 
and the optimized portfolio lies on the efficient frontier, frontier of the market bullet, or the Markowitz bullet. Um, another model that um, has been considered is the Frama French three factor models. Uh, this was proposed by Fama French in their original paper, and uh, basically they uh, they consider three factors. So the first one is again the excess return of the market, and the other two are small minus peak and the high minus low. These two factors are uh, constructed um, using six value weight portfolios that are formed on size, meaning the market equity and MOOC to market, meaning the, the MOOC value to market value ratio. The breakpoints that uh, are used, so for the market equity, the breakpoint is uh, the median of uh, the market. And uh, for uh, MOOC to market ratio, the, the breakpoints are the 38 and the 78 percentile. <coughs> Sorry. So um, in this way, one ends up with six portfolios and uh, the, the factors that are defined the following way. So small minus peak is uh, the average return of the three small portfolios minus the average return of the three big portfolios. And similarly, high minus low um, is uh, the average return of the value portfolios. And the value portfolios are those with a high book to market ratio minus the average return of the growth portfolios that are those with a low book to market ratio. There is, uh, um, so one can consider also a factor which is based on momentum. Um, momentum is uh, uh, the cumulative, is given by the cumulative return of uh, stock portfolios over the previous 10 months. And in particular, um, as done with the previous factors, one consider again six value weight portfolios uh, that are formal on size and momentum. And again, we have similar breakpoints as before, and we can define the winners minus losers factor as the average return of uh, uh, portfolios with high momentum minus the average return of portfolios with low momentum. Now, the whole point of defining um, these factors is to um, uh, look at the data for uh, different markets and see their effect over time. So, if one looks at uh, the US market, as I anticipated, the situation is very good um, because Kenneth French himself maintains, built and maintains a data library on his own page where he provides uh, historical data for Pharma French factors and portfolios um, for the US market. Um, in particular, uh, if we look at uh, uh, the methodology used by, uh, in constructing this uh, data library, uh, well, of course, the methodology uh, uh, follows what I presented in the previous slides. So, uh, the starting point are those six portfolios, um, and the factors are defined as uh, uh, as said before. Um, now, for US, the market considered is actually the New York Stock Exchange, AMX, and NASDAQ. And uh, the risk free rate is a short term rate, and in particular, the one month residual rate. And in saying that, the um, so uh, Fond French um, provide historical uh, returns with a frequency that is daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual. And the their time series start in July from July 1926. So you can see that the coverage is is pretty good. Um, which is uh, to say that if you look at US market and you want to do a sort of a returns analysis on, on the pharma French factors for stocks that trade in US, you are in a very lucky situation. 
But of course, the, the, the natural question that arises at this point is uh, what about the other markets? So, um, so for the other markets, for other country markets, uh, the coverage, uh, in, especially two years ago, when we started looking at these things, the coverage was not so good. So uh, this gave us the main motivation to uh, start our work and uh, to try and build uh, a data library uh, that could provide historical return data for other country markets. Um, when we, uh, basically at the same time we started doing, uh, we started this work, actually uh, Pharma French, so Kenneth French on his uh, own page started providing uh, Pharma French factors and portfolios for five regions. Um, these regions are uh, Europe, Japan, Asia X Japan, North America, and uh, uh, finally a fifth region which is called global and basically comprises 23 countries among the both, uh, four regions. So uh, well, this, is, this is of course uh, um, good if you want to um, look, if you want to compare stocks return in uh, to a larger uh, market, so to a global market. But if you want to conduct a more country specific, so a more granular, on a granular base level uh, analysis, um, this is of course not enough. So, um, what we did um, with Professor Marmi was to um, construct and make available uh, Pharma French portfolios for 12 developed markets and for emerging markets. Um, hopefully you should see the list. Uh, so basically the, the four emerging markets being the Brazil, China, India and South Korea. And uh, well we follow well, we, we followed the methodology of Pharma French, so we looked at uh, the original paper and of course we were inspired by uh, Kenneth French Data Library. Um, so we, we currently uh, provide uh, historical returns uh, for from a French portfolio for those countries with a frequency that is either monthly or annual. And our time series starts uh, in, from July 1988 for uh, developed markets. Um, for emerging markets, the start date um, can vary from 1994 to 1997, depending on the availability of the data. Um, one observation that I want to make, well, of course we use, uh, actually I should mention that we use a source database fax data. And uh, one other uh, observation that I want to make is that uh, we decided to introduce a liquidity filter. So starting with July 1994, we constructed the portfolios including stock, only stocks with uh, an average volume traded on the previous five days greater than 1,000 shares. So basically, uh, we, we, only consider share, we only consider stocks that have traded at least 1,000 shares in the previous five days. And of course we did this because uh, we, we, wanted to, we wanted our results data to be more accurate if they're going to be used for uh, returns analysis. Um, now, uh, if we have a look at uh, what happened at the case of the U.S. market, um, in this case we can actually compare with, uh, uh, with the Pharma French data library. Um, here we, we followed from a French uh, methodology, so we choose as market the New York Stock Exchange, IMEX, and uh, NASDAQ. And again, we took a short rate, so the 91 days treasury bill rate. And uh, if we look at uh, some statistics for the two data libraries, so we compared from a French data library with uh, our data library, um, 
on the four uh, factors. And uh, we look at uh, the mean, the standard deviation, and the maximum drawdown. Um, we can see that uh, um, well, uh, the, the excess return of the market and the winner's margin loser factor are more or less in line. Uh, we start seeing some differences in the I minus low factor, and this difference accentuates even more for the small minus big factor. This is even clearer if we look at uh, the correlation between the two databases on, on those factors. Um, and, well, we, we, we explain those differences, of course, um, the, the, the major difference is the underlying data sets that we use. And there are also some uh, differences in, in the methodology for the stock selection. Um, if we have a look at the historical returns for the U.S. market, uh, for all the four factors, we can actually um, look at uh, um, how they behaved over time and also um, see what uh, what impact the major financial events uh, have had on those factors. Um, I hope right now you can see the chart, the historical chart. So uh, the green uh, line is the winner's minus loser factor. The blue line is the excess return of the market. The orange line is uh, the small minus big factor. And finally, the pink line on the bottom is uh, the high minus low factor. So. In particular, if we look at the winner's minus loser factor, we can see that uh, um, well, the momentum effect we can see uh, behave very good and up until um, 2009, where it, it undergoes a, a, a big drawdown. Um, and uh, another thing that we can observe is uh, on the value on the I minus low factor, um, where we can see, for example, the the the, the, the value effect has suffered um, in the years 1998-1999, so following the, the the Russian crisis. Um, well, in the remaining time, actually, I, I want to uh, show you some other examples relative to other country markets, uh, starting with the UK market. <coughs> so, um, well, we, we will see that in all the examples we will we'll see um, the situation changes a lot from country to country. So for a UK market, uh, we can see particularly from 2008 that uh, the, the, the only factor that is performing quite well is the uh, winners minus losers, so the momentum. Um, and if we have a look at uh, historical returns, we can see this even more clearly. I hope that by now you can see the chart. So, again, the green line is uh, the momentum. Um, and the legend is as before, so blue is the market, small minus big is orange, and the high minus low is pink. So, we can see that the momentum again um, as, uh, as BA positively up until the 2009. Um, and uh, in general, it has this momentum effect uh, is, uh, is the most observable effect of the UK market. Um, when we uh, go and look at another market, and uh, for the, the next example, I actually want to consider Italian market. Uh, we'll see that uh, the situation changes, um, drastically changes, uh, actually, in a negative way. Um, one thing that we can observe is that uh, uh, from 2008, after the global crisis, the Italian market has suffered a lot. Um, 
Now, if we if we look at uh, historical uh, historical chart, we'll see that um, the, the the two effects that we can uh, see are the momentum and value again. Um, And uh, um, in particular, for the value, uh, uh, for the value factor, we can see that uh, there has been a downturn around uh, starting from 2009. Um, finally, uh, I actually want to show you an example from um, of an emerging market. And uh, I, I choose uh, the China. Um, so in, in this case, you will see uh, we, we have a, a, a totally opposite uh, kind of situation from the previous one. So we're seeing that uh, in Europe, uh, momentum is, uh, is basically the only uh, factor that, uh, has, um, that, that uh, was observable. Um, for China, this is uh, the, this is the opposite. So, uh, so if we look at the historical returns, um, again, green line is uh, the momentum, blue is the market, red is the small minus big, and yellow is the high minus low in this case. So, you can see that momentum is actually um, uh, is actually non not behaving very good. Um, while on the contrary, the small minus big factor is appears to be um, um, appears to um, behaving positively, starting from about um, eight, eight, nine years ago. So, so. I, even by looking at those um, at those results data by a very high level perspective, we can appreciate that differences from uh, in the in the structure of the market from country to country can um, deeply affect how the, the different financial French factors behave. So, um, really, if one wants to um, analyze uh, the the stock a stock return in terms of a uh, famo french factors model then uh, um, having at uh, having at uh, our disposal um, country wise data is is very important so um, well, thank you very much and uh, if there are any questions Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you for your presentation. <laughs> there is time for one, two questions or comments. Just one comment to Ciao, uh, Ciao Flavia. Uh, Ciao, Stefano. Um, um, momentum factor is tries to be market neutral actually no because I mean you have uh, uh, large uh, you, you you the split on capitalization you make um, high momentum uh, large caps uh, portfolio plus the returns of the high momentum small caps portfolio uh, minus yes. I, I would like to go back to the definition of the splits for the <laughs> facts because I mean the it's a little bit unfair uh, so first of all, this makes even stronger the case for momentum, if you want. And the second, it's a little bit unfair to compare the, a portfolio which is a, a market portfolio with the factors. I mean, in the sense that the factors are uh, not ex maybe not exactly market neutral, but you have short and, and, and long positions at the same time, uh, which makes a slightly stronger case for, um, uh, for value. Uh, this is what I wanted to comment, but I, I don't remember exactly, so I, I'm asking your help uh, to see if I'm saying something meaningful yeah, or, no. or just I, I agree completely. I included the, the market uh, uh, line in here just to, uh, because I, 
if you want, it's just a, a measure of time. So you can look at the market value and uh, see the, the historical events, historical market events. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not just to compare with the factors. It's more like to give a historical background <laughs> of what was happening in the market in the meanwhile. Okay, perfect. Uh, no more questions, comments? Uh, so let's thank again uh, Flavia. Thank you. Uh, Flavia, we are going to close the connection, if you don't mind. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Flavia.